Christian king and the competitive efforts of the Puntos sisters, Patric Patricia and Sylvian, both ranked among the world's top ten. It's grueling, it is demanding, it's breathtaking. The Nice Triathlon. everyone, Steve Armitage along with Steve King. Welcome to Nice, France, one of the more beautiful spots on the French Riviera. An absolutely ideal place to sample some of the finer things in life, including great doses of sunshine. And if you happen to be looking for a challenge, how about the triathlon? Starting with a four kilometer swim in the Bay of Angels. But that's only the beginning. The swim is followed by a 120K bike ride in the mountains around Nice, known as the Alpe Maritime. And to complete the triathlon, a 32K run on the Promenade des Anglais in the summer sun. How long will it take? Well, if you happen to be Mark Allen, who's back to defend his title, a little under six hours. His incredible record in this event makes him the prohibitive favorite. I've been here six times before, and I've won it six times, so... I'd say I've had very, very good luck here. It's a, it's a great town, it's a great course. It's one of the more challenging courses, technically, that we have in triathlon, and that makes it more interesting for me to come back and try and defend. Last year, Allen returned to Nice after an absence of two years. Now he's back to try and win a second straight title and seventh overall. The race here in Nice is gonna be much more difficult, though, than it was last year. It's not gonna be an easy one. One of the challenges to Allen will come from Mike Pig. The 26-year-old from the United States was a strong third in 89, but that wasn't good enough for the competitive Pig. Wolfgang Dietrich of West Germany is one of the stronger swimmers in the field, but in past triathlons, he's faded a bit in the run. Rob Burrell of Holland can't be ruled out. He was second to Allen last year and won the race in 1988. Another of those to watch carefully, the six-time winner of the Hawaiian Ironman, Dave Scott. He was dethroned by Allen last year at once revenge. The favorite among the women has to be Paula Newby Fraser. The 27-year-old from Zimbabwe is the defending champion, having run a tactically perfect race in 89. She's more than ready for 1990. I'm really excited for the race. I think I'm a lot stronger. I think I'm faster this year, but you know, at the same time, everybody else is a little stronger and a little faster. Hoping to be just that much stronger and faster, Sylvianne and Patricia Pontos, the talented twins from Kelowna, BC, threats in any triathlon. But the biggest challenge to newbie Fraser could come from one of the smaller athletes, Kirsten Hansen. She's a tiger on the bike. She won this race in 1987 and knows the course very well and welcomes the challenge three years later. I'd really wanted to come back and compete on this course. You know, I had a, a good race, but I had some problems when I did this before. And I've always wanted to come back to what I think is the most thrilling bike course I've ever ridden. The transition area is quiet now, but in just a few hours, it could be one of the places where the race is won and lost. The field is ready, and so are we, for the ninth international triathlon from Nice. When we return, the swim in the Bay of Angels. In five years' time, it is projected that the Ford Temple L will resale for less than the four-door Cavalier Sunbird. Isn't that like throwing away money as soon as you drive off the lot? This is CLR, clear, an amazing product that instantly dissolves calcium and lime stains that you can't scrub away. Watch as CLR dissolves the hard water scales from this humidifier filter. Have you ever seen anything like it? No amount of scrubbing was able to remove the stains from this coffee decanter, but a little CLR and water gets it crystal clean instantly. 
Watch how clear wipes away hard water film from tile. Make shower doors shine crystal clear. CLR instantly removes unsightly rust stains from your bathtub, sink, and toilet bowl. And nothing cleans your coffee maker, steam iron, tea kettle, or pots and pans faster or better. Get CLR. It will work for you or your money back. Available at Canadian Tire, Woolco, Woolworth, Kmart, Kresge, Towers, Zellers, Home Hardware, Pro Hardware, Beaver Lumber, Safeway, Sobeys, Do It Centers, Co-op Stores. With the new Chevy Sprint and Pontiac Firefly Turbo, what you'd never expect is 10.9% financing for four years and the best turbo mileage in Canada. What you would expect is snappy performance. The moon sets over the Bay of Angels and the sun rises on the Côte d'Azur. The gentle waves of the Mediterranean lap at the beach. One last chance to do a little fishing before the athletic invasion. All is ready for one of the biggest and best triathlons in the world today, the ninth international in Nice. The bike park opens at 6 a.m. sharp. The gun will sound for the swim at 8 o'clock. And Steve King, that's two crucial hours in which to make all those important final preparations. And it's two crucial hours that indeed go very, very fast for these athletes because they have plenty of things to do. Not only getting numbered up and getting prepared, they have to look after their equipment, make sure that everything is set perfectly in that transition area. Gentleman there pumping his tires, make sure he's got the right pressure, putting the food on the bars there, getting the gear set so you don't lose any time whatsoever when you come out of the swim, out onto the bike portion, and then obviously back again to the run. And they also have to do a lot of mental preparation. Mark Allen strolling around, just getting accustomed. He's psyching himself up. He's known as their master after all. Others with somewhat specialized equipment. Some bring their own masseurs, chiropractors, physiotherapists. And there we have Sylvia Ann and Patricia Puntus from Kelowna, British Columbia. They've been here before. They've also won the Ironman. Sylvia has done that on two occasions. Others stretching it out, doing a little warming up beforehand, physically as well as mentally. The pressure on these 1,000 athletes, many of them returning for a second or third time. And of course, the champion Mark Allen returning for the seventh time. Only two other men have won this event before. 1,000 athletes in the field representing 35 countries, including Czechoslovakia, Russia and Brazil. And the mayor of Nice on the boat with the flag to get this race underway. 1,000 athletes entering the Bay of Angels. And Steve, this is a spectacular sight for us, but it can be a very dangerous time for the athletes. It certainly can. Many of them aren't used to this French type of Le Mans style. It's somewhat dangerous because you can get trampled. There wasn't much self-seeding going on. And we can see the underwater shot as some of them are very close together. And they may hurt some of the other swimmers. Some of them may have to leave the swim later on. But already, someone's opening up a gap. Let's take a look at the course, Steve. And as we have pointed out, it is a four kilometer swim. It starts with an 850 leg to the first buoy, then 2,300 meters down towards the beach, and then the swim back to the finish line for a total of 3,950 meters or four kilometers. And already you can see some of the stronger swimmers have opened up a bit of a lead. Seems to be two packs forming there. Someone's spearheading both of them, and we understand Dietrich is in the lead of one of those packs. And I wouldn't be surprised, indeed it is, Wolfgang Dietrich from Neuss, West Germany. A man who's used to being out front. He led the pack in October of last year in the Hawaiian Ironman. In fact, he kept that lead right through the bike onto the first three miles of the run. Now, we just said about the Le Mans start, that's what can happen. This man, I don't know whether he panicked in the water, maybe he got kicked, who knows. But it is, as you said, Wolfgang Dietrich leading already. He's opened up quite a clear gap. I'm surprised that the pack has let him get this far ahead. But he's a man who can suffer a little on the run, so he wants to extend as much distance between him and the chasing group as he can. Dietrich and has rounded the first buoy, covered the first 800 meters, and Yves Cordier, I believe, of France, is sitting in second place. So that's good news for the hometown fans. It's good news, but Yves Cordier won't like that. He has come out of the water first on two or three occasions before this. He's the French favorite. He wants to be right up there, but I understand he's been injured and had some operations recently. Also out there in the top four or five, another Frenchman, somewhat surprising, Stéphane Poula. 
Mark Allen, though, right with him. He's with Cordier just on his feet. He's drafting. We know about that, Steve. You've talked about drafting before. It is legal in the swim. Obviously not legal on the bike, but it's a good thing to do. The only thing you've got to be aware of is to side up and make sure the person ahead of you is going in the right direction and making that shortest distance between two points. Water temperature today in the Bay of Angels, 21 degrees Celsius, and that's not too cool. Not too cool, but uh, remember, these athletes, they'll be fine in there, and they are wearing wetsuits. There are very few who don't use wetsuits in this type of swim now, but look at the gap that's opening up. What a distance already. I believe we've been told that's almost one minute gap now over Pula, the, uh, the Frenchman who's now ahead of Cordier and Allen. In a second group behind them also, Mark Pig and Gonzalez of Spain. That's a surprise entry. Well, Dietrich will need that lead when he hits the bike and the run, so he would like it to be as large as he can possibly make it. Indeed, but it's surprising that one minute, that's a lot of gap because you've got some world-class swimmers out there, Eve Cordier, of course, but Jan Wanklin, our present female leader out there from Australia, she's actually living in the States now, married to Kenny Glow, who's also in the race and very familiar to Canadian viewers. He was a man who won by one second last year at the Vancouver International over Mike Pig. This is not the first time we've seen Wanklin uh, lead the women's portion of the swim. She is a very strong swimmer indeed. But right now, the man to beat is Wolfgang Dietrich. When we come back, more swimming from the Nice Triathlon. Climb into the Formula One picture with the world champion and all the contenders who contest the Grand Prix circuit around the globe. Meet the front runners and the teams behind the scenes who put it all together to produce results for the driving elite. From green lights to fiery conclusion, follow the Autosport leader, Sports Weekend. Our next stop tomorrow, the German Grand Prix. Don't, 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 don't. I set it up. I make the choices. I set it up. No one tells me what to do. In Winnipeg, 67% of football fans tested preferred the taste of I set it up. over Diet Coke. Do it right, Daddy. Do it right. I set it up. Yeah! Everybody, everybody. Yeah! I set it up. Challenge your taste. <laughs> Honda presents a cure for cabin fever on those long excursions with the family. A wonderfully spacious redesigned Accord sedan. Why there's so much more comfortable room, you may never hear. How much farther to go, Dad? Again. Fourteen years ago, a nation's pride was ignited in Montreal when the Olympics came to Canada for the first time. Calgary had its chance in 1988 to host the winter version. And now the backroom wheeling and dealing is about to peak as the International Olympic Committee chooses a host for 96. Paul Henderson carries Toronto's hopes to bring the world back to Canada. Olympic bid 96. The Race for the Host Cities, next Saturday. The leading woman in the swim portion of the Nice Triathlon is Jan Wanklin, the former Australian, but not too far behind is Paula Newby Fraser of Zimbabwe, the defending champion. Indeed, she'll be happy with this, although obviously from where she's at, she doesn't realize how close she is to Jan Wanklin. And Jan is used to being out front. She came second in 88 and fifth place overall last year. Paula in a very, very good position at this time. As we look at the stretch of water that leads to the finish line, we see the leading male competitor, Wolfgang Dietrich of West Germany. And my, what a powerful stroke he has in the water. He does, and although he's known for losing it a little bit on the run, he's had some great performances recently with that 10th place in Hawaii, seventh in Ironman Europe, and second in a big race in Munich. But not too far behind him, though, just a minute back is another Frenchman, Stéphane Poula, somewhat surprisingly. But here is Wolfgang Dietrich, the 29-year-old from Neuss, West Germany, shortly to exit the swim after 4K and a fabulous time. 44 minutes on the clock as he exits the water. 
He'll be very, very pleased with that time. 44 minutes, as Steve King pointed out. Now, the race is on to the transition area, to the bike. He runs through the showers. He'll try and get that wetsuit off as quickly as possible, make his way up the stairs and into the staging area, the transition area where the bike is located. He wants to do this as quickly and as smoothly as possible without expending too much energy, but of course, not losing too much time. We mentioned the fact that the run is not his strongest suit, so he wants to make up as much time as he possibly can. And after Hawaii last year, he's certainly used to doing that, but one man who's not accustomed to being in second place in such a prestigious triathlon is this man, presently in second place. It is Stefan Pula of France. The locals will be delighted with this performance, as I'm sure he will be, but Wolfgang Dietrich right now getting prepared to go out onto that very grueling and demanding 120 kilometer bike course making sure that he has a little food tucked away in the back of his suit as he heads out on the bike. The first man to do so with the helmet on, and we should point out that the helmet in the triathlon is mandatory. Now Pula is coming out of the water. He looks a little shaky, Steve. Well, he's put in a very good performance there. He's just 59 seconds back of Dietrich. That's an excellent swim. You've got to remember, they're saying this is four kilometers. He he's gone the wrong way. Well, he looks a little confused there. What's happening is that tent is for age groupers. Where he's heading is where the seeded triathletes are going. Now we're looking out, I believe that's Yves Cordier, the second French man, and right on his heels, or his toes, that is Mark Allen, the defending champion. This is Pula in the transition area, and you can see the difference between Dietrich and Pula. And now coming out is Cordier, Yves Cordier, coming out at 45-47. So it's about a minute and 40 seconds back of our leader as they come through to the transition area. Mark Allen, the defending champion, right behind him, presently in fourth position. But he can make up time in the transition. You just watch. Coming out now, I think that's Mike Pig who's just gone past us, with Rob Burrell right behind him. So very good swims for those two. Rob Burrell, a past European short course and long course champion, a man who has won this event here in Nice before. Meanwhile, back in the transition area, Pula is still uh, trying to get out on the bike as Yves Courtier goes by. He must be kind of amazed because Pula had that big lead in the swim, and Courtier must be wondering what took him so long as Mark Allen now makes his way to the bike. He's very smooth in this area. Get the wetsuit off, get the cleats on, get the helmet on, get onto the bike and get out as quickly as you can. He does this exceptionally well. And with him there is racer number two, Rob Burrell, the Dutchman who's won this before, and he was second last last year so he has a lot going for him in this particular race he knows the course well as does Mark Allen of course six times winning out of six performances right behind them though Mike Pig going off very well there back in the Bay of Angels this is the group that has Dave Scott in it and he won't be happy with this performance because we have him at approximately three and a half minutes back of Dietrich that's a lot of ground to make up but Dave Scott he's not known as a man for nothing now, the first woman out of the water will be the former Australian Jan Wanklin. She has had a good swim. She has indeed. Uh, we've got her coming up, I believe, around sub 49 minutes, will, which will be an excellent swim for her for this distance. She recently raced in the Gulf Coast and got a third place there, and that's a half Ironman distance race. The swimmers coming out of the water run through the shower to the transition area. <laughs> An athlete there, perhaps a little disgusted uh, with his placing out of the water as Jan Wanklin makes her way up now towards the transition area. Try to get that wetsuit off as quickly as she can, and she'll make a left turn. She's made a right turn. She's going in the wrong direction. I'm really I don't believe it. I'm really surprised, Steve, that the officials didn't call her back. She's the leading woman. She's a seated athlete, and now she has lost very valuable seconds. We had a time at 48.50 as she come out, but she may have lost 10, 15 seconds just there. Now she has to make her way up the stairs to the transition area where her bike is located for the 120 kilometer bike ride. But as Steve King pointed out, she has lost valuable time by going to the right instead of the left. And here comes Paula Newby Fraser, and she's just one minute back of Jan Wankling. So an excellent swim for Paula. She'll be delighted with that one. Jan Wanklin in the transition area puts the helmet on. As I said, it is mandatory in the triathlon. Of course, always wise to wear a helmet when you're on a bike, but certainly in a triathlon, you must do so. As Paula Newby Fraser comes in now. Watch how quickly she gets out of that wetsuit and onto the bike. And others coming through. I see Kirsten Hansen just going past us. She's from Steamboat Springs, Colorado. 
and she has uh, twice been placed third in the Hawaiian Ironman. And right behind us, Sylvia. transition area. Mark Allen, the defending champion, right behind him, presently in fourth position, but he can make up time in the transition. You just watch. Coming out now, I think that's Mike Pig who's just gone past us, with Rob Burrell right behind him. So very good swims for those two. Rob Burrell, a past European short course and long course champion, a man who has won this event here in Nice before. Meanwhile, back in the transition area, Pula is still uh, trying to get out on the bike as Yves Courtier goes by. He must be kind of amazed because Pula had that big lead in the swim, and Courtier must be wondering what took him so long as Mark Allen now makes his way to the bike. He's very smooth in this area. Get the wetsuit off, get the cleats on, get the helmet on, get onto the bike and get out as quickly as you can. He does this exceptionally well. And with him there is racer number two, Rob Burrell, the Dutchman who's won this before, and he was second last year so he has a lot going for him in this particular race he knows the course well as does Mark Allen of course six times winning out of six performances right behind them though Mike Pig going off very well there back in the Bay of Angels this is the group that has Dave Scott in it and he won't be happy with this performance because we have him at approximately three and a half minutes back of Dietrich that's a lot of ground to make up but Dave Scott he's not known as a man for nothing now, the first woman out of the water will be the former Australian Jan Wanklin. She has had a good swim. She has indeed. Uh, we've got her coming up, I believe, around sub 49 minutes, will, which will be an excellent swim for her for this distance. She recently raced in the Gulf Coast and got a third place there, and that's a half Ironman distance race. The swimmers coming out of the water run through the shower to the transition area. <laughs> An athlete there, perhaps a little disgusted uh, with his placing out of the water as Jan Wanklin makes her way up now towards the transition area. Try to get that wetsuit off as quickly as she can, and she'll make a left turn. She's made a right turn. She's going in the wrong direction. I'm really I don't believe it. I'm really surprised, Steve, that the officials didn't call her back. She's a leading woman. She's a seated athlete, and now she has lost very valuable seconds. We had a time at 48.50 as she come out, but she may have lost 10, 15 seconds just there. Now she has to make her way up the stairs to the transition area where her bike is located for the 120-kilometer bike ride. But as Steve King pointed out, she has lost valuable time by going to the right instead of the left. And here comes Paula Newby Fraser, and she's just one minute back of Jam Wankling. So an excellent swim for Paula. She'll be delighted with that one. Jan Wanklin in the transition area puts the helmet on. As I said, it is mandatory in the triathlon. Of course, always wise to wear a helmet when you're on a bike, but certainly in a triathlon, you must do so. As Paula Newby Fraser comes in now. Watch how quickly she gets out of that wetsuit and onto the bike. And others coming through. I see Kirsten Hansen just going past us. She's from Steamboat Springs, Colorado. And she is a twice been placed third in the Hawaiian Ironman and right behind us Sylvie Ann Puntus and there's Taya Sibesma the Dutch lady making her debut here in Nice and behind her I think it was Katie Webb but going off out of transition right now Paula Newby Fraser now living in California and a three-time Hawaiian Ironman winner other athletes now exiting the water checking their watches they should realize there's an official clock they shouldn't get too worried about that right now have a lot of racing ahead of them. And the officials are checking the caps to make sure that everybody is out of the water when we return to the Nice Triathlon, a mini Tour de France.
Traveling long distance, voices should always sound this natural. My husband looks after himself, so I give him cereal that's good for him. Here's your cereal, Ralph, stocks and everything. I'm tired of cereals that are good for me. I want something delicious. So I found Kellogg's Mini Wheats. Delicious. Mini Wheats are good for you. They're made with 100% whole grain and are low in fat. Delicious. And Mini Wheats don't have straw to clog up the dishwasher. Delicious. They can't be good for me. Kellogg's Mini Wheats. Surprise. They're good for you. Quarterback Matt Dunnigan leads the Argos now under the guidance of head coach Don Matthews and they'll attempt to get the Argos going on Saturday night in Hamilton. The Ticats want another big game from Earl Winfield who has four touchdowns in two games. He has been a favorite target of quarterback Mike Kerrigan. Toronto at Hamilton, Saturday night on the CFL on CBC at 7.30 Eastern. And later on this afternoon on Sports Weekend, Don Whitman, Whitman and Ron Lancaster will join us live from Hamilton to talk about that game tonight. Now, in case you missed it, last night the Toronto Blue Jays had traded for left-handed reliever John Candelaria from the Minnesota Twins for Nelson Liriano, a second baseman, and outfield prospect Pedro Munoz. The Jays were trailing the Texas Rangers at Skydome this afternoon, 1-0 in the eighth really inning of play, when John Candelaria made his first pitch as a Toronto Blue Jay. His first appearance, this the first pitch to Harold Baines, man on. He takes Candelaria the opposite way, an RBI single that'll score Jeff Russell, who had earlier brought in the game's first run. And the Texas Rangers, after getting that run and getting to Candelaria, lead Toronto 2 to nothing. They are in the ninth inning of play. Elsewhere this afternoon, the Boston Red Sox leading Detroit 9-6. to They are in the sixth inning. Uh, Baltimore out in front of Kansas City, also by a count of 9-6 to in the seventh at Royal Stadium. Milwaukee in front of Chicago, 4-3 to at Comiskey. Now back to the grueling Nice triathlon and cycling. You're looking at one of the many villages that dot the Alp Maritime. Beautiful to look at, but if you happen to be a cyclist in a triathlon, they can be killers because they are located on the top of the mountains, which means you have to go up to the villages and down the mountain highways. And that really makes the Nice triathlon very unique indeed. I'm Steve Armitage along with Steve King. Welcome back to our coverage of this triathlon as you look at the cycle course, 120 kilometers in length. It is indeed a very difficult course. Jan Wanklin is in second place in the women's portion on the bike. And I'm really surprised, Steve, because at this point, Paula Newby Fraser is leading, and they're only a couple of miles on the Promenade des Anglais. And here's Paula Newby Fraser obviously going very hard very early. And Jan Wanklin is a very consistent rider. So our present leader, defending champion, Paula Newby Fraser. And our men's defending champion, presently in second place, but checking behind him because there is Mike Pig. We asked Mike what his keys were to the cycle. The main key is I got to stay with him. If I'm not with him off the bike, and the whole race is over with. If he's if he ever gets up to the front and the race by himself, the race is over with too on the bike. So main goal is just to keep him in perspective. And then I think the rest of the guys we can drop in the bike ride. Well, the game plan for Mike Pig is certainly working well at this stage in the bike portion. You can't say the same for Yves Courgier of France. He looks to be struggling a bit, Steve. He does indeed, but he has been injured and we do know he's had a couple of operations recently, but there again he was the first place Frenchman last year, coming fourth overall. We have a pack of riders here, four or five, now making a turn and they include Dave Scott and Kenny Glar is also in there. And Kenny Glar is a man who won in Vancouver last year, one second ahead of Mike Pig. Also there, Ray Browning, Ironman Canada champion just going through. But the leader is Wolfgang Dietrich and we got him to rate the bike course for us. Bike course is hard, so you can't push the whole course, but uh, I have to go from the front because my running is too weak that uh, when, I, when somebody passed me, I'm only second or third at the end, so I never come back. I tried from the front. The admission from the leader, Dietrich, that the run portion is not his strongest suit, so he wants to build up as much time as he possibly can in the cycle portion. And we have to remember that's 20 miles, but there's our lead woman just gone through. Paula Newby Fraser in the middle of a pack there as they're halfway up that big climb. 
are not too far behind. We have second and third places in the women's race, and that is Kirsten Hansen, and a big surprise there, Taya Sipsma of Holland, presently in third place. And in fourth place, Canadian Sylvian Pantus. It's surprising not to see Patricia Wright with her at this point, but Sylvian has done very well in this race before. There's Kirsten Hansen, and it's been quite a while since we've seen her, a couple of years. She did win it in 87. As I mentioned earlier, this lady is also a winter triathlete. She, in fact, won the Mountain Man Triathlon, set a new course record for women, lasted the second place woman by 50 minutes in that race. Very tough lady. But over the top of the first climb, it is Wolfgang Dietrich, the West German. Not surprising, really, because of the distance he opened up on the swim. But now this is where it's going to tell, because we have some men out there who are very fast on the descent. They can get up to speeds of 80 kilometers an hour as they make the descent, but very narrow roads. We're looking at presently Rob Burrell there, and he's in fifth place at this moment. Just ahead of him is the Frenchman, Yves Cordier. He's got them in his sights. Remember, there's no drafting allowed on the bike, so it's very tough to get past here. Again, narrow roads. We've got motorbikes to account for, a lot of S-bends and a lot of speed. And one man who's showing a lot of speed, our present leader, Wolfgang Dietrich. But look out, Mark Allen is about to make a move on Dietrich. He is going to pass him on this turn. Mark Allen is going to take over the lead. A good move here by Allen on Dietrich. And it is now Allen who is in search of a seventh title in this event has the lead. And that is somewhat scary. You see the narrow roads, you know the speeds they're going at. It takes a devil may care attitude to go like that. He is just flying. And there's Mike Pig. He's had some problems in previous years with the motorbikes that are out there on the course with the marshals and the cameraman. But a cameraman's view we get there of that tough road. It's been a relatively easy road so far for Paula Newby Fraser, the leading woman. How does she rate the course in Nice? This is one of those bike courses that I, I find the woman can't really hang with the men on the bike simply because the men are stronger on the uphills and they seem to be a little more daring on the downhills. So um, that's my only problem is the descents. And you know, some of those guys come by you and it's scary. She doesn't appear to be having too many problems, but this gentleman does. He has a puncture, and unlike the Tour de France, where you have all sorts of support groups with you, you have to repair your own puncture in a triathlon. And that's a great misfortune, but people like Dave Scott have suffered that way before. And there is Wolfgang Dietrich. And he's presently in third place now because Mike Pig has also overtaken him. So one and two now, two Americans, Mark Allen and Mike Pig, one and two. And there is Mark Allen looking so relaxed on those aerodynamic bars. And his cadence there, he should try and average about 80 to 90 revs as he ups the pace. He is really flying and he looks so comfortable, so relaxed. Remember, this man has won 15 consecutive races. He doesn't want to lose that streak. You talk about the aerodynamics of those handlebars, I would think they would really come in useful when you're going down the mountains. Oh, and in any other races, everyone knows what happened to Le Mans last year in the final time trial where he, he won it all just because of that time trial and those bars. Aerodynamics plays a major part in this sport. From the helicopter, you can see the cyclists coming down the mountain. This is Yves Cordier, who wasted very little time in taking on some liquid refreshment there. And going uphill at this time, one of the leading groups of four, and this is Dave Scott. We're just passing at this moment. And ahead of Dave Scott is two-time Ironman Canada champion, Ray Browning. Just ahead of him, Rob Burrell, the Dutchman, who has won this race in past years. And ahead of him, quite a surprise here because he's made up a lot of ground on the bike. From the States, Jeff Devlin, who's a very fast runner. From the leader, Mark Allen, we wondered what makes the Nice Triathlon so special. This is the only race that I've ever been at where the people line the entire course all the way out into the mountains on the bike, the entire way on the run, and it makes you feel like you're in a Tour de France. It makes you really feel like you're, you're as an athlete, it's an exciting place to race. And Mark Allen, the leader, is certainly doing his bit to excite the fans as we look at Kirsten Hansen. And Kirsten hasn't raced too much. Recently, last year she suffered from a broken wrist, but she did compete in December in Mexico when she won in Ixtapa. And she's presently third with Sibisma of uh, Holland in second place in her debut race here at Nice. So a very good performance from her. A good crowd throughout the villages. Remember, 80 kilometers of hills. And there's our current women's leader, Paula Newby-Fraser. 
She's really opening up a gap also on the bike. That's that Hamilton Satuia, 24-inch wheel diameter. It's a quite an extraordinary bike, uh, invented and designed by two friends of hers, put it together, and that's how she won the Ironman. Just a time slightly over nine hours for that Ironman distance when she came 11th overall. Now Mark Allen approaching another village and an aid station, and he's going something like 35 miles an hour. Look at the way he takes that bottle. Very experienced, does not lose a second. Obviously, you need to keep hydrated. It's getting very hot out there for the athletes. Wolfgang Dietrich, the first man out of the water, currently sitting in third place, and eight minutes behind the leader is Dave Scott of the U.S. It is somewhat surprising to see him so far back, but Paula Newby Fraser, a clear leader in the women's race at this time, and she is moving away. She is really opening up a gap. We understand uh, it is Kirsten Hansen who has now moved into second place ahead of Taya Sipsma of Holland. And there we can see the two of them. In fact, they're swapping positions there, second and third. That is Sipsma on the right and Hansen on the left. They're approaching with caution here. They've got a 180 degree turn. This is quite dangerous for them, but they're all slowing down. It's good to see that. A little caution there. Hansen on the outside. And Hansen moves ahead again. She reclaims that second position. So a great race for the ladies. As we look at Mike Pig presently in second position. And Mike is about to enter the tunnel and go over the cobblestones that European cycle races are renowned for. He comes back out into the light and he nearly goes over there. There's potholes all over this course. Just look at the attention he's getting from supporters and officials. And one man who gets all sorts of attention, the man known as the Grip and the Zen Master, leading right now, going for a seventh consecutive victory, it is Mark Allen. When we return, the final kilometers of the cycle portion in the Nice Triathlon. Did you know a new Chevy Lumina has more room than a Honda Accord? Hello? Hi. Hello? Hi. And 10.9% financing for four years gives you even more room to breathe. As the star of this summer's wildest movie, take it from me. When you take your little gremlins on vacation, stay at a quality, comfort, clarion, or sleep hotel. Because gremlins 18 and under stay free, but never, never feed them after midnight. Hello, room service. <laughs> Kids 18 and under stay free when you call 800-221-2222. Get 10.9% financing for four years on a 1991 GM compact pickup now. And five years from now, it's projected your GMC or Chevy resale price will be higher than four. portion of the Nice Triathlon. Mike Pig has made a move on Mark Allen. They are side by side. Indeed they are, and that's a great push for Mike Pig. But in third place, he's still holding that position. It is Wolfgang Dietrich, who is now just some two minutes back as he goes alongside Nice Airport. And there, our present women's leader, Paula Newby Fraser, on the final descent towards that Promenade des Anglais. But on the Promenade des Anglais right now is Mike Pig and Mark Allen. They're so close they could touch. Indeed they are, but they obviously know what's ahead of them. This is exactly the position they were at last year when Mike Pig went off course. And I understand that Mark Allen went slightly off course this year. It just made a few seconds difference, but now they're into the final couple of kilometers towards that transition area before they head out into the third and final portion of this, a 32 kilometer run. Oh, and look at that volunteer almost kicked the bucket, as I say. What a, a performance from the volunteer there. I'm really surprised he was not knocked over. It looks like uh, Mike Pig uh, moved ahead there, got some good cornering in there, good experience. But Mark Allen, this is exactly the position they were at last year. Mike Pig just wanted to come off the bike ahead of Mark Allen. 
lot of prestige in this race. We have to remember there's also $72,000 in prize money at stake. There's also a little bit of prestige to finishing first in the cycle race, maybe more of a psychological edge, and I'm sure that's what Mike Pig wanted to do. Mark Allen now unclipping his cleats from the cycle to get ready to put on the running shoes to prepare himself for the run portion of the Nice Triathlon. They move into the transition area together. And it looks like they're on record pace. We have them coming through at 3.53.44. And in fourth place right now, the first Frenchman once again, Yves Cordier, presently in fourth place. But in that transition area, it is Mark Allen making that quick and speedy transition, but just going out ahead of him, there's Mike Pig. He wants to get a few seconds ahead. He knows that Mark Allen is the faster runner. These two have gone head to head on a couple of occasions in Vancouver and it was Mark Allen who took it on both occasions there and he's a comfortable runner he knows exactly what he's got to do he's got the pace judgment he's got the experience Mike Pick can he hold on I'm sure if he's got enough of a gap he can hold on to that second place but we saw him lose second place last year to Rob Burrell Still on the bike and making their way into the transition area Jeff Devlin, Dave Scott and Rob Burrell but coming up now into third place, coming through into transition, he's some way back. It is Wolfgang Dietrich, again, just over a couple of minutes back about leading twosome there. And coming back to Mark Allen, there's Mike Pig. He doesn't want to lose too much in this early going. He wants to create as much distance between him and the third place man as is possible. He was in this position last year and he lost that second place to Rob Burrell. And this is Wolfgang Dietrich of West Germany. It looks as if he's dropped something there. He doesn't seem too concerned, making his way onto the streets. And as our two leaders go through, we've got three men coming through into fifth, sixth and seventh places. That's Jeff Devlin, Dave Scott, Rob Burrell. But they are some nine to ten minutes back of our present leaders. And it looks as if Mark Allen is about to make a move here as Yves Courgier, the Frenchman, comes into the transition area. And this is a position he actually retained right through to the finish line last year. The local crowd will be hoping he can hang on to that, but let's remember he's been injured. It looks like we've now had a break from Mark Allen. Remember, this is the man who is the reigning world champion. He won the Worlds in Avignon last year. Wolfgang Dietrich coming in to pick up some liquid. It's very important to avoid dehydration at all costs as we make our way back into the transition area. And that is Rob Burrell going through there now, and I think he's going out into fourth place indeed. And Jeff Devlin just coming right out behind him, but he ever speeded up in transition and made up all sorts of ground. Jeff Devlin, a real surprise there. We haven't seen him race too much in Europe, but he's had a phenomenal season in North America. And as Dave Scott makes his way out onto the run, we wondered what sort of strategy Scott might have for this portion of the race. You know, if I can get off the bike in reasonable shape, uh, I still feel confident that I'll be able to, to run well. And, you know, if, if it means passing a few people on the run, I hope I'll be able to do that. Scott is on the road now and looking for people to pass. Paula Newby Fraser is the leading woman and she has nobody to pass as she makes her way down the Promenade des Anglais and into the transition area. But she has just seen her friend Mike Pig. However, what she doesn't know is this lady, Tyre Sipsmer of Holland, is in second place and just behind her, Kirsten Hansen of Steamboat Springs, Colorado. A lady who's been in this sort of position before. Remember, she's a two-time third placer in Hawaii and this man, Yves Cordier, he's struggling early on in the run. He will be disappointed about this. He'd certainly like to retain the position he's in. And one man who's doing very well, Wolfgang Dietrich, the first man out in the swim. He's maintained third after the bike, and now he's running third again. And uh, I think he'll be pleased with that. And this lady, a, a crowd pleaser, if there is one, last year's champion. She's back to defend her title, having a phenomenal bike ride, continuing to pull away from the rest of the field. And the fans are really welcoming Paula Newby Fraser into the transition area. She starts to unloosen the cleats from the bike so that she can get them off as quickly as possible and into the running shoes. She goes up the ramp now and into the transition area. And the time we had, 4.26.13, a fast time but somewhat off record pace. However, I would mention that Mark Allen, as he went through, he is on record pace if he can maintain it. But Paula Newby Fraser, I'm sure they'll let her know she's quite comfortable in the lead in the women's race. So Mark Allen now, he has made a move, but look at the entourage he's got around him. Like every race in France, that's what they do. They love their sports heroes, and this lady is certainly one of those heroes.
Nubi Fraser, the first woman into the run. And this is 20 miles, 32 kilometers. And this lady loves ultra distance running. She holds the record for the Hawaiian Ironman and the marathon course part of that, a 306. And the men who hold that record, 240, Mark Allen and Dave Scott. Just 58 seconds separated them last year in the Ironman. And separating second and third places right now from our leader, Newby Fraser, just three minutes from Sibs Moe's just gone in and Kirsten Hansen. But it's Mike Pick from Arcata, California, presently in second place. And just last this weekend, he won a USTS race in San Jose. He looks like he's struggling a bit, but he's not really. This is Wolfgang Dietrich of West Germany, and he too looks pretty cool, calm, and relaxed, although I don't know how he does it in the heat. This is Dave Scott, currently sitting in fourth place in the men's. Um, Dave Scott, what a man this is. He's known as the man, six-time winner of the Hawaiian Ironman, but coming up now, looking strong, she has now taken second place. It is Kirsten Hansen. She'll be delighted with this. She's been off racing for quite a while, did some winter triathlons, but had a great season last year. She get a new personal best, coming third again in Hawaii. And our third placer, Taya Sipsma. What a performance from her, a debut here at Nice. The Dutch will be very pleased with this. They have a great mail out there in the form of Rob Burrell, a past winner. But it's Pauline Newby Fraser still moving away from the rest of the women's field. And Steve, she still looks remarkably fresh when you consider what she's already done here at Nice today. It wasn't so long ago in California that Fraser competed in a half Ironman in a time of four hours and 41 minutes, and in that same race, defeated the Punto sisters from Kelowna, BC. The man that everybody's chasing at this stage in the Nice Triathlon is Mark Allen. We'll have the finish of the Nice Triathlon in just a moment. When her debut novel was published, it caused an international sensation, and destiny soared to the top of the bestseller lists. Now, from Sally Bowman comes an extraordinary new novel of secrets and mysteries of the past. Discover a woman whose every loving impulse gives way to the darkness within her. Discover Sally Bowman's Dark Angel, everything you've been waiting for. Available in hardcover from Bantam Books. The Cannonball Bed Shops factory location at Highway 7 in Keele is relocating and clearing out over $2 million in brand new solid wood furniture. We're moving the warehouse to bigger and better premises with orders to sell off all inventory right to the bare walls. Save right now on the finest selection of solid cherry, oak, maple, and pine bedrooms and dining rooms, plus wall units, kitchen sets, desks, and much more. It's a complete wall-to-wall -wall sellout at one time only clear-out prices. Everything goes at the Cannonball Bed Shops factory location, 85 Bulls Road near Highway 7 in Keele, open Sunday, noon to 5. Tomorrow, the second jewel of the Bank of Montreal Triple Crown will shine. Last year, with approval, became the first Triple Crown winner in 26 years thanks to a thrilling stretch run which clinched the second leg of the series. This time, his Vestia can't wait to get into stride with a possible million-dollar payoff awaiting. Live on Sports Weekend, the Prince of Wales Stakes. Mark Allen is about to pass Mike Pig. Allen heading home. Mike Pig still making his way to the halfway point in the run. And Mark Allen looking at his watch there. I think he's after that record. He doesn't just want to win. He wants to set a course record. This man now, he would be happy to hold on to that position he's got. Presently in third place, but Rob Burrell is making up some ground. That's Wolfgang Dietrich again taking on liquid. It is very important to avoid dehydration. Rob Burrell there, he's got his own water pack on there, you can see, so he doesn't have to stop at any of the aid stations. That's very sensible, but he is having to carry some extra weight. Taya Sipsma, the Dutch lady, is doing so very well, presently in third place. And there's no question that Kirsten Hansen knows the importance of the run in the triathlon on a hot day. But still the race comes down to a very lengthy run at the end and uh, gets warm. You need to be sure you're hydrated and uh, hopefully come through with flying colors and feeling good towards the end because 20 miles is a long ways after a good tough ride like that. 
Well, Kirsten Hansen looks like she's running very comfortably at this stage in the race. Sylvian Puntos, Canada's Triathlete of the Year in 1989, currently in fourth place. How about a special seeker for Newbie Fraser? I like to have a lot of men on the run because then you just sort of line them up in front of you. You just <laughs> you sort of start to try and pick them off. You know, they they sort of become they become a, a motivation for you on the run. She makes the turn at the halfway point. She checks her watch. I think she recognizes right now she's not on record pace, but she will also be checking that watch to see where that second place woman is. But Mark Allen, a man who is now going for the record, remember last year's winning time, which he said 5.54.31. That's the time to beat if he's going to win and claim a seventh Nice victory and his 16th consecutive win. And we're looking at Dave Scott right now, who has just been passed by Rob Burrell. So Burrell has now moved into fourth place. You can see him just about 50 metres ahead. So he'll be trying to chase down Wolfgang Dietrich. Six-time Ironman world champion, known as the man. It's good to see him back in action. He's not at peak performance right now. He has been injured for a little while. And there is our present third placer, that is Wolfgang Dietrich, who wants to hold on to this, but there will be spectators letting him know exactly where Rob Burrell is. Kirsten Hansen going past, taking a look over to see the present leader, Paula Newby Fraser, and she looks to be well clear. But it's Mark Allen who's coming along. They promenade days on clay at this point with just a couple of kilometers to go. And he is looking very calm, cool, and relaxed as Mike Pig takes time to take on a little bit of liquid and throw some of it over his head to cool off. Mark Allen gives a thumbs up sign. He knows that he has got this race won. The big question mark now in the minds of many as he makes his way down the promenade is will he break the record in going for his seventh title? Arms are raised. He can almost sense and feel that he has this one in the bag. He certainly does. And he is moving towards the finish line. We'll keep a close check on the clock. Remember his record. 554. He is going to smash that by about three minutes. A tremendous run by Mark Allen. His time, 5.55.2. A tremendous time for Mark Allen, who wins his second straight and seventh Nice Triathlon title. What a tremendous showing by Mark Allen of the United States. What a performance, what a day for this man. A brilliant race once again. What can you say about him? 16 consecutive victories. And this man also, Mike Pick, held it all together and he's going to take second place. He'll be happy with that. And he's coming in, it looks like, just over the six hour mark. Six hours and seven seconds. And that's three minutes faster than the time he recorded last year when he placed third. So Mike Pick will be happy with that one. Coming on top of his victory last weekend in San Jose. So Americans one and two. And there is Mark Allen kissing the gold medal, celebrating his victory. And, and coming in to take third place is Rob Burrell of Holland. And he'll be delighted he's take first place before second place and today third place. The Dutchman, one of the leading Europeans in the sport of triathlon. So we wait to see whether Wolfgang Dietrich in fact could hold on to that fourth place. And here comes Wolfgang Dietrich of West Germany. He will indeed take fourth place. Let's get a comment from Mark Allen. Yeah, I was I was really amazed. I didn't think I could go that fast. And uh, I get to turn around to the run, and I saw my clock, and I thought, well, I, I'll be close. Four minutes, That's, that was amazing. So much different races here. I think it was hotter, too. Uh, I felt hotter out there. Mark Allen wins his seventh title in Nice with a record time of five hours, 50 minutes and 52 seconds. And Dave Scott crosses the line to finish in fifth place with a time of six hours and six minutes. So the final standings, Mark Allen wins it, Mike Big in second place, Rob Burrell finishes in third. When we return to the Nice Triathlon, the first woman to cross the line. Coming up next, an arena full of riders on the edge. All set for a quick trip that will shake the senses at the Molson Supercross. If you love watching motorsports from the grandstand, if you've ever wondered what it's like behind the wheel, 
then you'll want to be a charter member of the new Molson Motorsport Club. Hi, I'm Mario Andretti, chairman of the Molson Motorsport Club. If you call this toll-free number, I'll tell you how to get all these club benefits. As a charter member, you'll get access to the best seats at races, discounted advanced ticket sales, special racing items and events, exclusive motorsport videos, and safe driving tips from Mario Andretti. Plus, the official club newsletter packed with special offers and inside reports for members only. So call now, 1-800-MOTOR-CLUB for free information. You must be 19 or over to join. I'm glad the club also supports safe driving programs because winners don't drink and drive. And if you call before July 31st, you could win a trip to the Molson Indy in Vancouver. You'll get a pit tour, meet my team, and get an inside look at IndyCar racing. So call now and get in on the action today. Welcome back to the final stages of the ninth International Nice Triathlon and our coverage on Sports Weekend. I'm Steve Armitage along with Steve King. We're looking at the woman who is about to win the women's portion of the race, Paula Newby Fraser. And her time extremely good, better than last year. And this lady making her debut, Taya Sipsma. She's worried about Sylvianne Pantus, but Sylvianne, I understand, is about seven minutes back. She's looking comfortable, but she won't be happy. She placed second last year, remember, just two minutes back of Yubi Fraser. Her sister Patricia, though, also struggling. She's about 20 seconds back of Sylvianne. And she struggled a bit last year too when she placed third, but then she was 10 minutes back of her sister. But a lady who's leading them both at this time in second place, Kirsten Hansen. Now she's some 10 minutes back of Paula Newby Fraser, but a comfortable three minute margin over third placer. But right now we've just seen Paula Newby Fraser overtake Yves Cordier, the Frenchman. So he won't be pleased with that because he's never been beaten in this race by a female before. Takes a lot of guts and courage to hang in there. One lady who's not missing any guts or courage though is this lady coming again the defending champion, Paula Newby Fraser. There we have a shot of Jan Wankling from Australia, the lady we saw come out the swim in first place for the women. She's presently in sixth place on the run. And I'm quite sure that Jan will be very happy with the way she has performed, uh, both on the bike and the run. And she'll be pleased to know husband Kenny came seventh, but right now we're just a few hundred meters away from Paula Newby Fraser taking her second victory. And her time, it looks like some 12 to 13 minutes faster than last year. And listen to the way the crowd here at the finish line is bringing home Paula Newby Fraser. She is up the ramp. She crosses the line to win her second straight Nice Triathlon title with a time of 6 hours, 36 minutes, and 19 seconds. I'm quite sure that she'll be happy with that time. I felt a lot stronger this year than I did last year. Um, I think I did about the time I predicted I would. I thought to myself that I would do. Any doubts in the course? Uh, no, no. Felt really, had a great swim, felt really strong on the bike, and uh, just knew that I had to run steady. I didn't think, I think if I got off the bike with a few minute lead, I didn't think anybody would catch me. And what a tremendous performance it is once again seeing this lady win a major ultra distance race. No wonder she's the queen of ultra triathlons, but coming in second place, a lady who's returned from 1987 after a victory then, a second place with a time as she comes across the wire. 6.46.01. Some 10 minutes back of our winner, but a delighted Kirsten Hansen. Great day out there. I couldn't have asked for a better day. Just beautiful. And in third place, a surprise for this lady and a surprise for us triathlon aficionados. It is Taya Sitzma of Holland. And her time, it looks like she's going to be comfortably under seven hours. She's about three and a half minutes back of our second place, the Kernson Hansen, and she crosses the line 6.49.33. What a debut from this Dutch woman. Not bad for her first time in the International Nice Triathlon to pick up the bronze medal for the young lady from Holland. A tremendous run, a tremendous first race. Now let's check the standings. Paula Newby Fraser wins her second straight title. Canada's Sylvianne Pontos was fourth, her sister Patricia fifth. Sylvianne finishes 20 minutes behind the winner. The Nice Triathlon is now history, and a history-making race it was, with both champions successfully defending their titles. And what does it take to be a champion? I think my strength within triathlon is the fact that all three all my three sports are pretty even. 
I don't have an outstanding weakness or an outstanding strength in any of the three disciplines. I would say that over the past few years I've brought all of them to uh, an even level and I think that's the strength as opposed to somebody who's a weak swimmer and a really good runner and has to come from behind. I feel like I race towards the front throughout the whole race which is to my advantage. And Paula Newby Fraser certainly did that today, as did this man, Mark Allen, who last year won his first Hawaiian Ironman. But this lady, she's a three-time Hawaiian Ironman champion. But Mark Allen, seven victories here in Nice, and he set a new course record today. Certainly, we've been privileged to witness exceptional performances by the reigning king and queen of ultra-distance triathlons. But we must also remember that there were 1,000 other triathletes who took to the waters at 8 a.m. this morning. They come in all shapes and sizes to compete here at Nice. Who knows, we may be seeing the future Mark Allen. Now for Steve King, I'm Steve Armitage. Au revoir from the Côte d'Azur and the ninth International Nice Triathlon. We've just seen some extraordinary athletes displaying their drive and endurance over the course of the three strenuous events. While decathletes don't have the same kind of length to handle, they need the strength to compete in 10 separate events over the course of two days, events which encompass a wide range of skills. Among the best in the world and really just getting started at age 22 is Mike Smith, a University of Toronto star performer. Mike Smith's 1990 season began with a bang in Auckland in the very first event of the decathlon, the 100-meter sprint. The Kenora, Ontario native was off and running. And he raised his efforts to a new plateau among decathletes, soaring beyond the 8,500 mark in the event, the most ever by a Canadian, as Smith ruled the Commonwealth Games as the gold medalist. In June, Smith traveled to the foot of the Austrian Alps, to the castle Mount Fortin, a kingdom where decathletes reign supreme. And this was the unofficial World Championships, the annual meeting of the world's top decathletes. But in this third event, the high jump Smith no heighted, failing to score a point, as he aggravated a hip flexor muscle, an injury which forced him to withdraw.